It's a kind of like a dream come true, you know, because just everything's happened so fast for me in the past 12 months, you know, winning the world title, uh, signing with MTK Global, and then setting up this uh, deal with um, Eddie Horn and matching promotions. It's just, it's just unbelievable, you know. Just, it was in and around, but it didn't get announced till after because there was a few little headaches we had to push out of the way first, you know. But um, yeah, it, it came about uh, with my my initial promoter, um, Mike Altamora. So he went in under the MTK banner under a certain um, occupation and we sat down and we spoke and he thought it was the best move for me to go under the MTK Global banner to help help uh, promote my name because I've, I've, I'm pretty much under the radar, I'm, I'm relatively unknown so making the move to MTK Global would have really helped me, helped me uh, push my profile up you know. Yeah straight after the win and I've been back and forth to MTK Global and there was a couple of deals on the table, so there was some from America and here but my heart was always like, if, if a deal comes up with Eddie Horn, I'm taking it because, you know, he's, in my opinion, he's the leading guy at the minute in professional boxing. You know, he's paving the way, so it only made sense to, um, it was a no-brainer for me to um, to sign the deal and get it done as quick as possible, you know. It yeah, it was, it, was really a, it was a really emotional time, especially having my family there and everything. And I've been through a bit of shit beforehand, you know, and um, my career wasn't really progressing. Even though I was lined up for a world title fight, just before I won the Eliminator, I had a lot of problems and a lot of setbacks. And, and what, I, honestly, I, I was thinking about going looking for a job. That's that's where I was at. And um, then we got a blessing. We got a phone call for an Eliminator in Thailand. We won that. Got to Japan. We snatched the belt from Iwasa. And here I am, about to uh, defend my title in um, Madison Square Garden on Friday night. Unbelievable stuff, you know, stuff of dreams. So what happened was my son was born, and I was on a promise for fights here. So I. My son was only two months old. I left to come to America to get ready for a fight. It fell through. Oh, we got, got another day for you. That fell through. Our fights just kept falling through for me, and I was starting to lose faith. Like, there's only so much you can do, and I was away from my family, away from my little boy, and um, I just, I just, I had my bag packed, and I was ready to just move on and um, go back to Sydney and reset and go again. And then the phone call came for Thailand and it just kind of started steamrolling from there. Then I signed with MTK and uh, won the belt and yeah, yeah, here we are. Being honest, being, being the away fighter and when you're fighting and you're in a close fight like that, they can be nip and tuck. And me judging a fight, I, even though I don't like it, I, I try and go by a judge's mentality and they like to give the close rounds to the home fighter, you know. Um, so at the end, I did say to my coach Hector Bermudez, who's one of the biggest boxing IQs I've ever came across. He's like the most knowledgeable boxing man I've ever met. And I, I just looked up at him and said, what do you think? You got this, A4. That's just the way he said it to me. Yeah, you could see it in his eyes. Um, my, my coach from Sydney, Tony Del Vecchio, he was like, you know, a little bit edgy, you know, because he knows what it's like. And uh, but Hector was just, yeah, we got this. And then the decision was announced in Japanese, so we were kind of like, and then my hand got raised I was just like oh, I was just overcome with emotion I started crying and I even had somebody tell me you stop crying and get some good photographs I just couldn't stop you know so emotional actually for everything I've been through and the journey I took to get there I didn't have no favours you know it's been a long way around but it just tasted that much sweeter winning a world title in the fashion that I did you know I got some great support because you see I'm, I'm Irish but I've been living in Sydney for the past nine years so I've got a, I've got a lot of friends on both sides. So when they all came together and amalgamated in uh, Tokyo, they made some good noise. Like there was parts of that fight where they drowned out like 2,000 uh, Tokyo fans, you know. So that was very good. But yeah, come a Friday night, I've got some good support coming over from um, from Port Leash in Ireland. Uh, a few people coming from Sydney, and then there's a lot of Irish people I know here in New York are going to be coming down. So yeah, they'll bring the noise. See, we, we live in Australia. I, I moved there and I just fell in love with the place. The lifestyle is so laid back. The people, you know, just the environment is really nice there, you know. Um, so we, we live in Australia, so we, we go back there in between camps. I stay taking over, just sparring and, you know, doing my thing. And then as soon as we get a day, I'm on the plane and I'm out here for 10, 12 weeks uh, training my head to a new desk. And the reason for that is I wanted to surround myself in a world-class environment to bring myself onto another level. And I think it's the best move I've made in my career because since then I've become a more rounded fighter. Even though I like to say that even though I'm a world champion, I'm, I'm still in nappies when, when it comes to our diapers, if this is for, for the U, US fans, when it comes to um, boxing and, and my experience. you know, I'm still learning on the job. And it's just great to be in a position being a world champion and um, 
just progressing all the time, you know. Everybody was like, it was a time of the economic downturn. Ireland was struggling, there was no work. So all my all my friends were going there. So I was like, I was after losing, I lost the fight in the national finals and to go to the Olympic qualifiers. And that was my dream broken. And it's another four years, you know, to get back on the, the, the road to the Olympics. So I was like, do you know what, I'm gonna take a year, I'll go to Australia. And like I said before, I just fell in love with the place and the lifestyle and the money was good when we were working there so you know it was very hard to come back from that. It was one year, two years, three years, now it kind of feels like I go back to Ireland for a holiday. But Ireland will always be home, you know, it's Port Leash is where I'm from and uh, it's very close to my heart. I get a lot of support from back there, they're great people. To any Irish fighter that's um, been fighting overseas, that's in the back of your head all the time, just getting home, the fight in your hometown. Especially being a world champion now, I think um, I think I'd be I'd be a good draw back there because the people in Port Leash are really bu buzzing to um, get me back there, and hopefully w with the talent that we have in Ireland right now, we can make a fantastic card. Especially with the amount of matchroom fighters that that work with Irish fighters, you know. So yeah, that is a, a potential move, and hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Yeah, it was crazy because we're back to Sydney, and I got received really well there, and then I got back to Port Leash. They put me in this uh, convertible car, drove me up through the town. I'm like at the start of the parade up through the town, you know. I look back and there was a crowd. And by the time, because the main street goes uphill, and I remember getting to the top of the hill and just looking back, the street was black. You couldn't see, it was just nothing. It was just crowded with people. It was unbelievable. Just gather momentum the whole way. And it just goes to show that people are just looking to grasp and grab onto something, somebody to support. And now we have a world champion. And I think the town where I come from, Port Leach, it's a really, um, it's a really sporting town, you know. And I think it deserves to have something like this to be able to follow and um, progress, you know. So they, 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 they know the ins and outs of everything. They know what it's been through, you know. So it's kind of like a, I know this is cliche, but it's a real life Rocky story for me anyway, you know. And um, having done it the hard way and Know, just being able to come through and now it just just seems to be exploding since I won the belt you know in, in the fight first round head clash boom split my eye and uh, regrouped from that came I came out and won the next few rounds and I settled into the fight well then you know it's your first world title fight it was a little bit tight once I settled into the fight I got into a rhythm I was boxing beautifully I was really enjoying it it's a, one of the most enjoyable fights I've ever had especially when you know you you're that, you just have that you have his number you know um, yeah, so I had the, then I got the bumps and the bruises and um, I broke my thumb at some stage in the fight. I remember hurting it but the pain went away and um, the last few rounds then was was busy for me. But if, to look at me, it looked like I took a beat and I think he was the winner looking at both our faces after the fight. But a lot of it was from inside work rubbing and, and I mark up pretty easy, you know. But um, not a lot of them from clean punches, like, you know, so because it's just that I mark up. Mark up pretty easy, you know. Yeah, that was yeah, that was a that was a sneaky little snap by my boy. I'm so happy he got it now because anytime I look at it, I get like a lump in my throat. It's just, it's just so emotional for me because that it was that moment. Because you know, it's in the ring, everyone's pulling out here, and even going from the ring to that hallway, it was like yeah, people we pulling on me, rubbing my head, and it's just we were going into the um, get checked by the doctor, and I just said, Mike, just give me a minute here, I just. And I just fell down onto my knees and started crying again. I was an emotional wreck. And um, yeah, it wasn't until a couple of days later, Mike threw up the sneaky four and I was like, I was glad he did it afterwards, you know, but I, di I didn't know he got it. And um, I didn't know much about him beforehand. Um, we, there was a couple of names true out there because, see, even though the fight was announced last week, it's been in the works for a while now, so, and we've been given a few names and they were lower down the ranks. And I'm like, World champion, you know. I want to fight somebody in the top ten, and he, I think he was the highest ranked available opponent. So we had to go with him. So I started like I'm not one of these fighters to, oh, I don't watch any footage or anything, you know. The answers to the book are on YouTube. Why not get in there and, and check him out? He's a busy little fighter. He's gonna bring it. It's his first world title fight. So I know he has that burning desire that I had it in August. So he's gonna come to try and take this belt and try and change his life, you know. But I think the position I'm in right now. I'm perched right at the top of the 122 division and it's going to take something special to knock me off and Takeshi's going to have to take something special on Friday night to beat me. People think that and they, and they think that the fight has come at short notice to him but he's had a lot of notice for this fight too, you know, it's just that it couldn't be announced because there's a few minor details that had to be brushed over before we could announce it, you know. So um, he's going to come ready, he's going to bring it and he's a busy little fighter. Like, to look at his record you wouldn't think of it but you can um, Japanese records can be very deceiving because 
they throw them in with anybody. There's no padding records in Japan. You know, they fight the best of the best. So I know this kid's experience. He's been in some good fights. So he's going to, he's going to bring it. But as I say, I'm 100% confident in getting the win. And I think this is going to be a good fight for me to break out and get my name out there, you know. And on a, on the DAZN platform as well. And I think it's been shown on Sky Sports too. So it's like a, a nice little breakout fight for me. And I think it's coming coming at a really good time for me because I'm just really becoming a more rounded pro and I'm just hitting my straps, you know. Because like people are asking me, oh, how does it feel to be a world champion? You know, oh, it must be great. Like, I didn't want to sound like a, a bit of a... Uh, a bit of a dickhead, if I can say that. And I was like, yeah, look, I'm a world champion. Yeah, it's sunk in, but like, this is what happens. You've reached that goal. Next, what's the next goal? Unify. You know, every time you want to build, you want to move on. It's, it's like anything in life, you know, once you reach that goal, you've got to set the goals higher. And yes, the unification is first, but number one, we got to get Takashi out of the way. But, um, that would be a great fight to be lined up if Eddie can get it done to fight Danny Roman. There's other champions there as well that I think will be able to work into the zone platform. So there's no reason why unifications can't be made in the 122 pound division right now. Just on the Carl Frampton thing, since I turned professional, and I know like the media outlets might have been trying, that might have been trying a way to get me, get me noticed and stuff, but every time I cringe because, you know, me and Carl got on well in the amateurs. We came up through the same circuit on the Irish team and stuff, you know. And I didn't want him thinking that I was name dropping him or trying to get any attention off his hard work, you know. But yeah, I, I, I hold a win over him. And um, yeah, just I've, I've um, I boxed at a pretty high level. I've come from the world renowned high performance unit in Ireland, you know. I won the first um, installments into it when it started. And uh, I won a lot of Irish titles. And um, on an international level, I've got a, a lot of gold medals and multi nation tournaments and stuff. But, if I was to be honest, I don't think I reached my full potential as an amateur, um, because I think when I was a young kid, I was I was a little bit of a brat, you know, and I, I was very hot-headed, and I think I could have went a lot further if I was able to con control my emotions. So that's when I went to Sydney, I took the time out, it gave me time to think, and I was more mature fighter then. And when I turned pro, I've just become a, a different man. I'm able to control my emotions in the ring now, and it, it, it's showing. I'm a world champion now, like you know. Yeah. Well, I would have been, I, would, I would have described myself as a as a, a counter puncher, but um, I think I'm I'm more um, kind of an aggressive counter puncher now. Where I I push the pace, I make you shoot, I make you shoot and miss, and then try and counter off that. But um, since I've come under Hector Bermudez, he's added so many guns to my arsenal now. Where if he wants to go toe to toe, we can mix it up on the inside. If he wants to box long, you know, he can have it whatever way he wants it. I, th I think you, you, can see, you can see a lot of aspects in my game on Friday night. A prediction, I want to just predict the victory because I don't like to be putting any unnecessary pressure on myself or picking around and stuff. And I know this kid is busy and I know he's going to be bringing it for a world title fight. And the Japanese are known for the warrior spirit. So he's not going to lay down. I, I've got some good punch power, you know. When, when, they feel, when they feel my power, they get very reluctant to attack, even pressure fighters, you know. But um, I think... If it goes the distance, I think I'll, I'll win it pretty comfortably. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my prediction. A wide, a wide points prediction, and the knockout comes, it comes.